so good morning students today we will going to start our next topic of phylum platyhelminths and this phylum first of all we will deal that what are platyhelminths next we will go for the general characters then classification and economic importance of phylum platyhelminths so first of all we want we know that what are platyhelminths kya hote hain platyhelminths the animals that belongs to phylum platyhelminths they are commonly called flatworms why they are called flatworms because their body is dorso ventrally flattened and they are soft body animals with bilateral symmetrical here in these animals the gelatinous mesoglia of nidarians it is replaced by mesodermal cellular parenchyma a type of packing tissue consisting of more cells and fibers than mesoglia okay now next are the general characters first is the body form the body of this platyhelminths it is soft soft in nature dorso ventrally flattened like leaf or you can say ribbon like they have definite polarity of anterior and posterior ends but they lack segmentation like earthworms okay next is the germ layers germ layers kitni germ layers hoti hain iske andar the animals uh, in the phylum platyhelminths they are triploblastic means there are three germ layers present in the platyhelminths phylum these are ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm symmetry of the animals in this phylum it is bilateral bilaterally symmetrical with a definite anterior posterior dorsal ventral right and left sides level of organization is organ system level of organization is there present in the flatworms they have definite organ systems like digestive excretory nervous and reproductive system syphilization means presence of head here in these animals head have evolved in response to progression in one direction okay these animals which is kept forward during locomotion has become the head of necessity the end that is kept forward in these animals for locomotion so in these animals the anterior end jo hai it becomes head and sense organs they are concentrated at this end to judge or meet the environment first body wall of platyhelminths it consists of single layer of epidermis and musculature here the epidermis it may be cellular or syncytial it may be ciliated in some rabbits and are found in epidermis of most of the tubularians muscular system here in this platyhelminths is primarily in the form of sheath and is of mesodermal origin and is differentiated into circular longitudinal or oblique layer of muscles they are present siloam in platyhelminths it is absent so these animals they are called acilomates because of the absence of siloam that is no body cavity it is present next are the appendages these flatworms they lack particular appendages but they have some cilia for locomotion next is skeleton so no mineralized skeleton is present in flatworms like spines hooks these structures like these structures these are present and these are composed of sclero protein instead of mineralized skeleton digestive system it may be absent and it is incomplete that is only a single opening it is present which function as both for ingestion and ejection next point is the respiration so respiration in the flatworms it generally takes place through general body surface and they lack any specialized respiratory organs circulatory system is also lacking the flattening of body is the consequence of these animals having no circulatory system here it is clear that due to flattening of the body the circulatory system is absent 
and their dependence on simple diffusion from body surface from respiration so these are the two reasons why the circulatory system is absent in the flat worms next is excretory system it consists of two lateral canals with branches that bears flame cells or photonephridia however excretory system is absent in some primitive form main excretory matter in this flat worms it is ammonia in aquatic forms and this system also help in osmoregulation in these animals next point is nervous system nervous system is more organized in flat worms as compared to cnidarians it consists of brain and two main longitudinal nerve cords connected by can connected at intervals by transverse commissures so it give a appearance like bladder cd hoti na jaise do seedhe dande hote hain aur dono aapas mein jude hote hain through transverse lines so like that nervous system is present in this flat worms simple sense organs they are also present however eye spots in some cases they are also found in this platyhelminths next is reproduction reproduction is that the most of the forms in platyhelminths they are bisexual means the sex sexes they are present in the same organism male and female reproductive system so reproductive system it is complex and usually with a well developed gonads ducts and accessory organs females they have ovaries that produce ova and vitelline glands which provide yolk sacs gonads they have ducts fertilization is internal and development is direct in free swimming forms in those which have a single host in their life cycle so life cycle in these flat worms it is usually indirect in internal parasitic form and is more complicated and often involve several host also and last point is about the natural history it deals with the point that members of the class turbillaria they are mostly free living that may be terrestrial freshwater or marine and members belonging to class monogena trimato and cystoda they are entirely parasitic in nature okay now what are the unique features of phylum platyhelminths first is that the body is dorso ventrally flattened body is also unsegmented without cuticle then presence of mesodermal connective tissue that is parenchyma instead of mesoglia then presence of flame cells or photonephridia for the purpose on excretion and osmoregulation next is the presence of ladder like nervous system and last is the presence of separate yolk secreting vitelline glands ovaries producing ova only and eggs are ectolecithal next we go for the outline of the classification of phylum platyhelminths the phylum platyhelminths it includes four classes so what are these four classes these includes class 1 is turbillaria class 2 is trematoda class 3 is cystoda now first class turbillaria it includes three orders first order is acela second is rhabdocela and third order is triclidida so there are some examples given under these orders next class is monogena it does not include any order and examples of class monogena is polystomum diplozoon gyrodactylus third class is trematoda it contains consists of two orders that is digena and asphidobothria the order digena it consists of animals like fasciola schistosoma mainly parasitic platyhelminths they are present in this order digena next order is asphidobothria it includes asphidogaster and cortiespis these are the examples under this order aspidobothria last class is cystoda it consists of two subclasses that is cystodaria and eucystoda subclass cystodaria it includes 
animals like amphilina biporophyllium and gyrodactyl second subclass it has two orders that is pseudophyllidae and tinoidae pseudophyllidae it includes animals like diphyllobothrium haplobothrium and creophyllus tinoidae order it consists of animals like tinea echinococcus diphyllidium so this is an outline of classification of phylum platyhelminths next is about the economic importance of the flatworms what is the economic importance of this flatworms so there are some harmful flatworms that causes diseases so these are some pathogenic flatworms of human beings and some are pathogenic flatworms of useful animals so a large number of flatworms from order trematoda and cystoda class they are parasites of humans and causes disease in them like ophistho rica sinensis and internal intestinal fluke of human being and causes ophistho apis sorry ophistho rickiasis which is characterized by degeneration of liver jaundice weakness etc fasciolopsis buskai it is an internal fluke that causes inflammation and hemorrhage in the intestine schistosoma hematobium it is a blood fluke of man and causes schistosomiasis which is characterized by diarrhea and anemia and also enlargement of spleen and liver schistosoma mansonia schistosoma japonicum these are also blood flukes of men next is paragonimus westermanni it is a lung fluke of man which causes paragonimiasis that is characterized by cough fever and anemia next pathogenic flatworm is tinea solium and tinea saginata it is a human tapeworm which inhabits human intestine and causes tineasis that is characterized by weakness anemia indigestion and abdominal pain next pathogenic flatworm is echinococcus granulosus it is an intestinal parasite of dogs but sometimes it also occurs in man and causes hydatid diseases that is characterized by enlargement of liver and blindness also and last is hemolapis nena it is an intestinal parasite of man and causes hemolapiasis that is characterized by abdominal pain diarrhea and inosinophilia so these are the pathogenic platforms that causes disease in human beings next we will deal with the pathogenic platforms of useful animals first one is a fasciola hepatica it is also called liver fluke of sheep and goats which causes fasciolopsis or river rot in them next is echinococcus granulosus it is also called dog tapeworm next is diphyllidium canium it is also a dog tapeworm diphyllobothrium it is a fish tapeworm so these tapeworms they causes heavy loss to our useful animals